practice in this as an experienced archer to incorporating archery and archers into events. Um, mostly this is pointed at uh, event steward types that might want to add archery to an event, although uh, any event steward that was going to work with an event that incorporates archery already and they want to understand it better, that's this class also. Because uh, that's what we're going to be talking about is the needs of putting an arch archery into an event. Um, to begin with, uh, the, the, the big question in my notes, why bother with archery? Well, several reasons. First of all, archery was incorporated and was present at the first tournament of the SCA, the Garden Party. Uh, more so at the second tournament where they have a film of it. You'll notice they actually set up a real archery range. Nobody knows, well, not a lot of people know that at the first tournament, Master Beverly dropped off his daughter for the party, saw what was going on, and ran home to get his crossbow mm -hmm. and brought it out to the party to demonstrate his medieval-style crossbow. Um, I think he shot it once or twice at a shield. Because, uh, of course, they're in a backyard and you can't do this very much. Uh, but there was archery at the first event of the SCA. Uh, and for the snobs who turn up their noses at crossbows, the first archery in the SCA was a crossbow. <laughs> Might want to remember that from time to time. Um, I ran some numbers of a particularly uh, popular archery range at a kingdom event and discovered that the numbers on site of the people on site, one in five had visited the range that weekend. So we are a going concern in the SCA, although some people think it's sort of a periphery. Well, when you're running 20% of people are out, out of the archery range, um, it's something that should be maybe paid attention to. Uh, one of the reasons to do archery at events, large and small, is it's one of the first things that a, you can introduce a newcomer to that they can do completely. Uh, you can put a bow in their hands, give them some arrows, a short amount of instruction, and they are participating on the same level as everybody else on the range, where it's really difficult to get them into, say, armor. Okay. Uh, you don't need to get them in armor, but if they want to go shoot on the range, they can absolutely participate completely uh, and be part of it. Um, it's good for children who don't have anything else to do. We got a lot of bored children running around out there to the point where sometimes they even stop coming to events. Um, for the non-athletes in the crowd, if you're not willing to strap 60 extra pounds to yourself, archery may be a way to go for you. And uh, what I refer to as war orphans, and these are children and adults uh, if you can establish some, an extra target archery range at a war, it gives something for the sideliners to do that while everybody else is roaming around on the field trying to figure out what the battle scenario is next. Um, I've done that a few times. It's been well appreciated because some people go to the wars because their people are in the war and they've got nothing to do. It's getting a little better with classes and stuff, but you can also throw in an archery range. All right, we do have an ongoing program in the West of Archery. Um, it's av available or it should be available to all outdoor kingdom and principality events. They're expected to have archery unless you've got a site that doesn't allow it. And we do have a couple of sites that we use that don't allow it, but I'll get into that later. Um, when I wrote this, I was thinking there are four or more events which are primarily focused on archery. There's actually six at least in the kingdom. Um, if anybody wants, I can list them, but uh, the, the archery community is out there and sometimes needs to have an invitation to be brought in and associate with everybody else. Um, I mentioned some sites don't allow archery and sometimes you can convince them that they want to do it. Others, uh, certain parks just absolutely, positively, never, ever, ever, not much you can do about that. Why do we want more archery? Uh, several reasons. Some participants in the SCA only play at local events. They do not go out to kingdom and principality events. They don't go out of their own town. If 
the events in their own town don't include archery, they never see it. Um, this would be, you know, this is the, the main reason I can think of, not, not to mention archery is fun. Um, local events also draw more re possible recruits or you have more time to um, interact with possible recruits uh, where you're not pressed for time because you're trying to do a big tournament. Uh, you have more time to talk. So it might be better for recruiting. Um, it can keep more pe people busy and of course more fun and more opportunities for fun prizes. Everybody likes to get prizes. All right, moving along. Um, hey, Edward, a, yes. um, we had a comment in chat from Tokyo. Sure. Uh, he mentioned uh, warranting for archers and that that is a level of entry. Um, could you speak to that? Like the basic safety rules that you go over before you hand somebody a bow? Or That's actually the next section. Okay. As a matter right. of fact. Um, although I will mention, we do not warrant archers in the West Kingdom. We warrant archery marshals, but we do not warrant archers. So anybody who walks up to the range and gets the safety lecture is available. Is uh, they can shoot at that point without major supervision. Uh, we have not found that this is a problem. Uh, is this a little bit different in some other places? Uh, yeah, from what I understand, I have a, have a couple of friends that came from Kaid in particular, and uh, when they came back, they have a, a two-part authorization thing that they need to earn a card to show that they understand the safety and what aspects of archery. But in Trimeris, we don't do that. We basically give them the, the spiel and then uh, go from there. Yeah, in general, I, I give them the spiel. Um, if I'm If I'm rushed for time, uh, if anybody's heard my short spiel on this, there's two major rules on the archery range. One, don't shoot anybody. Two, don't get shot. Everything else follows <laughs> from those two. Uh, I, I, I don't, I, that's not a full, uh, that's not a full uh, spiel, obviously, but the, that, that leads into it. Uh, but okay, what do, um, how do we make archery safe in the SCA? Well, to begin with, we choose safe spaces. Uh, we apply backstops to these spaces. The space itself, uh, and I'll get more into this in a couple of minutes, uh, but the space itself is such that it's very difficult, um, unless it's something has gone completely wrong, to get an arrow out of this space to hurt anybody. The space is big enough and the space is wide enough that the likelihood of an arrow going in a direction where it's going to hurt somebody is next to nothing or really nothing if you can make it that way. Uh, we apply backstops to catch the arrows before they go way down range. Uh, these work to a point, but I'll get into why they don't work completely in, uh, in the planning stages. Um, and we have marshals archery marshals to make this safe. Um, a target archery marshal in the West has gone through a training program. Uh, this is one of the few uh, aspects of the SCA where there is an actual requirement and sign off sheet in several parts. You can do it in, at uh, different stages or all at once. Um, that looks suspiciously similar to a Boy Scout merit badge requirement form. Uh, there's some reason that this does look like a requirement form because I wrote it. I also work with Boy Scouts. It seemed like a good idea. But as, a, as somebody who's trained as an archery marshal, it's know this, know this, do this, do this, do this. When you get them all done and the Kingdom Archer is confident that you're ready to go, it's all signed off and you go, but it gives somebody a, uh, a clear path to getting signed off. It's not nebulous. It isn't different for other people. It's all there. Uh, I'll get a little bit, bit more into that later. Um, as far as our safety record goes, I've been working with SCA Archery for at least 10 years now. It's probably actually 11. We have had one reportable injury on a range in that time, to my knowledge. 
that had to be reported up to the Earl Marshal of the Kingdom. Uh, and that was not actually a shooting accident. It was an archer going to retrieve arrows, leaning down to retrieve one arrow, did not notice a second one, and got poked in the eye, and the eye was scratched. And they went to the emergency room to make sure they didn't scratch the cornea. They didn't, by the way. Uh, it was mildly painful, but that, was, that is the worst injury we've got in 10 or 11 years. Uh, and that can be prevented also. Okay. The SCA has a target archery marshal's handbook. It consists of 16 pages. It is not the thing you want to give to a beginning archer to learn what they're doing. Uh, the West Kingdom has a one-page set of archery rules for on the range. This is the one that you want to be able to give to people. Keep it simple. Keep it short. Give them the basics. Um, it was necessary to do the one-page rule sheet. Uh, we lost ours for a while. We had to rewrite it. But this is one of the other things. We do have a set of range rules, and it's very easy to show somebody. Um, the penalty for violating range rules can be a warning or it can be removal from the range. And having that single sheet, it's very easy to show them that yes, you did violate this rule right here. And that's why I'm removing you from the range for the day. All right, that was, that was most of the safety stuff. Any questions on that? Yeah, there's a couple of questions in chat. One is- Sure, go for it. What type of backstops? And the second one is around insurance requirements. Okay, um, the backstop uh, that I'm talking about is usually a what's called an archery tarp. They're 20 or 30 feet wide and about 10 feet high. They're made of a mesh of Kevlar or polyester. Uh, they're propped up on poles behind the farthest target. Um, the thing is, they are not absolutely safe from passing arrows. Air, most arrows stop on the tarp. Some can go through because it is a mesh and if you get it exactly in the right place. Um, I'll get a little bit more into terrain backstops as I go into that section. You can have a hillside, will do a really good job as being a backstop. Uh, if you don't have that, if you have to do open field, mostly my idea is the purpose of the backstop is not necessarily to make the range safer because you can totally get an arrow past the backstop, but to speed up the retrieves of arrows downrange that have missed the hay bales or the uh, the stand-up foam targets uh, in that make your archery run faster because you're not looking for arrows all the time. Okay. Any other questions? The other one was about: Are there any special insurance requirements to ask for 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 the event steward or riders that are required if you want to have archery? No, uh, it's covered in SCA insurance. If you have an official event that has been publicized in your newsletter, you're covered for archery. There are no writers. Um, to give you an idea, and well, this, this should be in the safety section, um, insurance statistics, if you can find them, uh, and I have, I have it bookmarked somewhere, but I couldn't pull it up if you asked me to in a moment. Um, statistically, archery is safer than tennis for emergency room admissions of X number of people playing the sport. Uh, and most of the admissions in the emergency room for archery are hand lacerations. That's an equipment problem. Uh, oh, it's also hunters getting sliced on their razor broadheads, which we don't use. Um, so statistically, it's very safe. Uh, if, if you can... And I'll get, get into this where you can actually tell people, look, this is safer than tennis. You, most parks wouldn't balk at having a tennis court. You know, they see, see that as a reasonably safe activity. Archery is statistically safer than that. Somebody is commenting? No further comments. Okay, I heard somebody saying something. All right. Um, now, what do we need for a range? Oh, that's it. It's, I'm, here, I'm hearing my own echo. That's what it is. Um, to begin with, for a range, mostly you need a safe space that isn't being used for anything else at the same time. Hopefully not out in the boonies. Um, 
there's a lot of event stewards and it's sort of been a tradition in the West. To, uh, and I know this is a thing at Penzik. Archery tends to be put way out in the boonies, um, which is kind of a barrier for people participating. Uh, some of the best times we've had with archery ranges are where they're, oh, call it 50 feet off the main field is the, um, the sunshade for the archery line. So you, everybody who's there knows archery is happening. I've got a couple of minutes. I'll go over there and do that. The closer it is to your main event area, the better. That being said, you still have to have a safe area. Um, mostly space, not in the boonies. Uh, you need a good direction to shoot in, good ground, shade, and helpful terrain. Uh, by a good direction, I mean, if an arrow get, goes out of control or goes too far, what is it going to hit? Um, it's really inconvenient when, for instance, the parking lot is out beyond your archery range. Because, you know, a lot of people visit that parking lot in the daytime and you have to wait for them to walk out and walk back. Uh, so you need a safe space that nothing's going on. Um, a good direction to shoot in, good ground. And by good ground for archers, flat without gopher holes would be about the first thing, although you can mark the gopher holes. Um, and although green grass seems like it would be an advantage, to archers, it isn't. Um, our best ranges for finding arrows are bare ground, trampled grass, where the, the arrows cannot hit the grass and bury themselves under the grass. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm seeing a couple of nods out there. Um, so we, we don't necessarily need the lush grass. Tall grass has the same problem that arrows go in it and get lost. Why are we worried about arrows getting lost? Uh, these days, arrows can cost anywhere from four to $12 and up each. Um, so it, it can get expensive if you're losing a lot of them. Um, shade. Shade is wonderful, especially if it's near the shooting line so that your archery marshals are not completely in the sun all day long. Uh, you can make shade, you can put up a pop-up or two uh, that becomes a social area, that's fine. But if you can put it next to, if you can put your base camp of archery next to a large tree, even better. Um, helpful terrain. Uh, I'll get into sizes of archery ranges, but if you could have helpful terrain that limits how many people can walk through it, um, how far arrows can go beyond it, uh, these are going to help you. You don't want you don't want people walking through your archery range from the side if you can help it. You may have to put up a fence. Um, I run archery for the uh, local Scottish games. The only way I would run it, uh, and the only way I do is we have the inside of the horse arena, the rodeo arena, that's surrounded by a 20 foot wooden fence. I don't like drunks in my backfield. Uh, I, I, I like to prevent the drunks in my backfield and anybody else wandering around the site, it's absolutely impossible to get into the backside of this because we lock those gates shut. All right. Um, if you're at a fairgrounds, sometimes the arena is a good place to put the archery if you can get permission to use it. Um, so helpful terrain, uh, a hill behind the archery range that will stop arrows from going farther out, um, an embankment, a berm with certain restrictions. You don't want a whole lot of rocks downrange. Arrows break when they hit rocks. Blind trails, trails from the site that lead into the backside of your range. Bad idea. It's nice. You, you can do this when you can see them, but you have to stop archery from going on when they happen. Um, Swampland. Uh, I was set up at, at one site. I was running archery and was given a, a location. This will be perfect. There's this big hill behind where you're shooting to. This will be great. The hill had a whole bunch of 
natural springs coming out of it. I did a test shot. I buried one arrow up to the fletchings in the mud that was the hillside and decided, you know what? This is not the space that we're going to actually have this. We did a little backpedaling. We had to find another spot down in a creek as it happened that had a backstop on the other side. Um, but if you're shooting into a swamp, you're going to lose arrows. Um, tall grass is bad because it hides arrows. Thickets of blackberries, poison oak, various other things where if your arrow gets into it, you can't get it out are bad for the same reason arrows cost money. Um, if you're shooting towards a road, okay, and sometimes we've done this where um, there's not really much danger to traffic on a road that's um, moving on the outside of your sight. But some places are really popular with cyclists and cyclists like to stop and look. And we've had a couple of places where the, the, the natural spot for the cyclists to stop and look was directly downrange from the archery range. This is to be avoided because you don't like shooting at anything that's not in a tin can. Anywhere in the area of it, it's best to be avoided. Um, people parking RVs downrange of your archery range such that you have to get them to move, especially if they are from another site user and you got to go find somebody to tell them they got to go move. <clears throat> that can be avoided by marking your downrange all the way down. I'll get into that in a minute. And blind spots, any kind of blind spot where you won't notice somebody coming in from the side of your range or the back of your range. Okay. Um, I'll get into, there's a couple of things that can help us. Uh, I have a note to talk about the backstop and the purpose, uh, which I've already kind of done. The backstops we use are cloth curtains that um, sometimes, most of the time they stop the arrows, sometimes they slow them down. But at no point can this be the only safety measure you have for people close behind the range. Um, okay, may I have that uh, graphic up, please? This is a, a regulation recommended SCA archery range marked in red. You'll notice the shooting line is near the bottom. There's a couple of hay bales marked out and the curtain backstop is marked backstop. Overlaid in green is a 90 foot regulation baseball diamond. If you're out of the site and you're trying to pick out a spot to put the archery, what you got to imagine in your head, and especially for the uninitiated event steward that you're helping, is this looks a lot like a baseball diamond. We prefer a safety area 45 degrees on either side of the shooting direction, which means 90 degrees total. So what we're doing is the safety area is the space in between the foul lines. Yes, it is that big. Uh, measurements on this, the far target is in scale 40 yards out, just in front of the backstop, which means the far line, the top red line is 80 yards out. Um, Baseball diamonds vary in, in their uh, uh, depth, but it's about the same as the baseball diamond. Is anybody not getting how this is described and not getting this in your head? Pipe up now. Okay, will we take the graphic down, please? So, um, the rules for setting this out are in that 19-page uh, manual or 16-page manual, Target Archery Marshal, or uh, Target Archery Marshal uh, manual for the SCA. It's available on the Kingdom website. It's available on the SCA.org website under Marshals, under Archery. Um, I could send you a copy if you needed it, but when you boil it all down, it boils down to that graphic that you need a, an area 40 yards longer than your longest shot. 
which means if you're shooting at a 40-yard long shot, which we do for competition, you need an 80-yard field, and you need angular clearance out as far as 45 degrees on either side, which is the foul lines on a baseball field. Um, if you're walking a site as an event steward and you don't see something this big, there are a few mitigating factors that can um, allow you to make this smaller. If, for instance, you're shooting against a hillside, you can make it considerably shorter. You can get it down to about 50 yards long with your farthest target out at 40 yards, and then you're shooting into a hill that would be fine. If you have a hillside coming up on one side, you do not need all of the clearance over to, um, to the full 90 degrees out. If your arrows cannot possibly, being shot from a reasonable person, go that far out. Uh, and I, I say by a reasonable person, um, shooting at a 40 yard target if you're a novice, um, a, I don't recommend it, but if you're trying to shoot a Royal round, uh, it's entirely possible to go right over the 10 foot tall tarp behind it through an error of range. So it can totally go beyond that. Uh, the maximum range of an adult's target archery bow is approximately 150 yards. If I were to cock back at 45 degrees and let go. I could get out to 150. If I'm down and I'm reasonably aiming at a target, it's not likely to go past 60 or 70. Um, but we do have to be a, a aware that a an error can go fully 20, 30, 40 yards beyond the target if it's a fairly powerful bow. And that's the, the thing where we need the extra 40 yards behind the target or a hillside or some other terrain feature, a uh, high fence would be useful. Um, otherwise, if, if in an open field, you really do need that baseball diamond. Okay. Now, if your site has that, we can talk about putting in an archery range. Um, let me see. Okay. Getting on to how to add archery into an event that does not already have it. Um, my recommendation, the first step is to check with the site and see if they allow archery. Most fairgrounds don't have a really big problem with this. Uh, some public parks do. Uh, the, the best illustration, Ed Levin Park in the East Bay in Milpitas uh, does not allow archery. It's weird. They have been talked into allowing SCA war archery but they do not allow target archery because somewhere in their past, they've had a bad experience with another archery entity that has come in there uh, and trampled over some endangered species in a vernal pool or something or other. I'm not exactly sure. Um, in some cases, if they say we've never been asked, you have then an opportunity to convince them that yes, we do run this as a very safe sport. We don't get a lot of injuries at all uh, it's, and it's run with people who have been trained and they're very, uh, it's a very safe thing. So first thing, check with the site, win them over if necessary, then get yourself in contact with a target archery marshal somewhere in your area if possible. Um, the certifications for a target archery marshal are such that they should be able to independently of partnership with somebody else, set up and run an entire small archery tournament. Like set up all the targets, set up a backstop, set up a, a proper range and obstacles and run a royal round or a novelty tournament or something along those lines. Um, that is what the requirements were designed to accomplish. Um, Check locally, check with your principalities. Our principalities have archery officers. They're there to help you. The kingdom has an archery officer. They're there to help you. And they have a list of all the target archery marshals in the kingdom and can tattle on anybody in your area that has the right requirements for you. Aha. Um, 
if you don't have a certified target archery marshal to do this, you can borrow one. I've traveled to places and, you know, I've driven three hours to go set up a range. I'm happy to do this. If you get the right person, they'll do this. If you have a couple of months lead time, you can get a willing person to go through the requirements and become a certified target archery marshal because they are laid out as a set of requirements and they know exactly what they have to do. And in this way, you can have yourself a certified target archery marshal, but although running their first tournament, they, you might wanna see if you can get them some help from outside also if you don't already have it. Uh, that being said, uh, yeah, get one of your own certified. You can do that with about two months lead time. They can get it done. You could do it in about a month, but they have to be attending other events where archery is happening so they can do something like demonstrate that they can call a line to another archer that is trusted by the kingdom archer to say, yeah, this person knows what they're doing. Okay, um, walk the site. If possible, have the archery marshal who's going to be involved and the event steward walk the site and figure out where the archery range is going to be. And make sure that the event steward doesn't need that space for some other event that they're holding. All right. Um, if you cannot personally get there, uh, one of the tools I have found helpful for telling event stewards where archery ranges should be located on sites is something called Scribble Maps. Uh, it's scribblemaps.com, I believe. Uh, you can find it online. If you need to be reminded, drop me a line and I'll send you the link. On Scribble Maps, you can take a, uh, a Google Map and it'll show a Google Map and you can zoom into the area you're talking about. And when you get the, the proper framing, you can use some very simple drawing tools to draw on that map, save it on their cloud, so you get a link to it, and then email that or IM it to the person you're talking to to clearly describe, I need this area for archery. Okay, this, as I said, it's been very helpful to communicate with event stewards who are working the first time on a site where we've had archery before, where do you want the archery range? Well, let me show you, I'm gonna send you a picture. I'm not gonna describe it to you because there might be some misunderstanding. Here, let me send you a picture. Uh, I will admit that I have had the event stewards then pass off making up the archery range area and marking it off to another person, maybe a spouse, who had heard something about you only need 15 degrees to one side and the other side and, and completely fouling it up to the point where we had to backpedal and get a couple of people to move their camps. Uh, communication is good, a map is good. Having somebody actually admit that they don't know everything would be also useful. Okay, um, so if possible, walk the site with between the, the the event steward and the marshal and figure out what kind of markings you need. Um, Principality of Sanagua keeps a bundle of about 60 bamboo garden stakes. These are meant for marking out the margins of a range. All you gotta do is poke a hole in the ground, drop in the garden stake, and then there's a little archery pennon to go on top of it. And if you set these every six to eight feet, along you get a very clear picket line that tells people maybe you shouldn't go here if you've got truly clueless people you maybe need to attach some surveyors tape between the picket poles that you've put out that say don't go here um, and if somebody is stupid enough to set up an encampment within that once you mark it out you can ask them to leave and you can get the event steward to back you up all right um so definitely with with the event steward with cooperation with the archer the event steward should know where they need to mark the archery range before the event gets started so that nobody else goes there you absolutely have to do this because if somebody decides to put a camp in the middle of it it's going to be really hard to move um usually the event steward is asked to provide hay bales for backstops 
for archery ranges if the archery officer does not live nearby. They could do it. Somebody else could be de delegated to do it. Um, a standard range needs um, at least six, six hay bales. Nine is better, but a minimum of six to have two different backstop lengths. Um, so hay bales need to be figured for. Um, they don't need to be anything fancy. They don't need to be edible hay. Some of the best ones we've found locally, the cheap ones are rice straw. Uh, it has the advantage since there's a lot of silica in the rice straw, it polishes your arrow tips as you shoot at it. It's good stuff. Um, but you just need the, the, the cheap straw. And um, you, they do need to be properly banded that you can stack them one on top of the other. Um, and as I said, six minimum because a, a single target backstop is three bales. So you need six bales minimum. So you can say have a 20 yard, a 10 yard and a 20 yard uh, shot. And if possible, nine bales, because then you can set it up. So you have a 20, a 30 and a 40. And that allows you then to shoot Royal rounds for score. If that's what you're doing at the event. Some events don't need the really big archery range and you can get a buy with uh, a 10 or a 20 yard range. If you're just playing around on, um, novelties um, and by novelties i mean targets that are not colored circles on a piece of paper where you mark numbers for score uh, novelties uh, and th these these i'll take a moment to digress here novelties are some of the fun things to shoot at uh, hey, they Edward, can get very creative hey, Edward, before you get into novelties i just um as a horse person, I can tell you that there's a lot of different densities and sizes for hay bales. Ah. So if you could give a little bit more specific direction on like, are these three stringers, two stringers, 80 pounds, that sort of thing. Oh, you know more about this than I do. I usually just ask for bales of rice straw. Okay. Uh, and you, you do not need the bales. If, if the hay company says, do you want archery bales? You don't, uh, because what those are, are the e extra dense bales that will stop a, an arrow from a compound bow, and we don't use those. Uh, a compound bow is fully capable of sending an arrow downrange at 300 feet per second. Uh, our bows at the maximum are getting onto about 150 feet per second. Um, a standard straw bale will not stop an arrow from uh, a compound bow, but it will stop a hand bow arrow just fine. Um, I'm not sure. I usually, I'm pretty sure there's three strings on most of what we use for rice straw bales. Does that help? Yes, okay. it does. All right. Um, so where was I going next? Uh, oh, novelty. Novelty shoots, yes. Okay. Yeah. Fun things to shoot at. Uh, and, and this gets in and you can consult your, your archery people but you can totally bring the theme of an event into what you're shooting at, especially if you've got an artist or two that are willing to paint up a couple of fun targets. Um, some people know I run children's novelty shoots. They're called a pop and Jay shoot where we're shooting at little beanie baby birds. And um, those are a prize shoot actually, because if you, it, we started, well, the effective shot is 19 yards to the bird. And it's a little, you know, beanie baby birds are about four or five inches high. Uh, if you can shoot one of those off the perch at 19 yards, you deserve a prize. They're smaller than the bullseye on a standard target. Um, it's a, a, a quick method of doing a prize shoot in that it's very clear if the bird came off the, the, the perch, you get the prize. Uh, and it's not as boring as shooting um, paper circles and marking points. Um, any kind of plush toys from a thrift store can be shot at without too much damage to the arrows. Um, we've had uh, shoots of bears of unusual hue. You, know, you go in after Valentine's Day and get all the discarded teddy bears the plaid teddy bears, the tie-dyed teddy bears, the, the, the pink teddy bears. Uh, you can make these targets. Um, I've found enough um, 
dragon plushies at a thrift store to make up a novelty shoot. If what you're doing is trying to expand, if you're not worried about making it a championship event and you want to involve a lot of people, give them some fun targets to shoot at. Um, we have a spiders on a web target where the spider uh, legs are wire covered with uh, black um, chenille stems, uh, pipe cleaners. So they're black and fuzzy. And onto these, you drop a black water balloon that holds it in the basket on the web so that when you hit the spider, it goes splat. Anything you can do to incorporate some sort of fun target in your event um, is going to be well received on the other end. Um, you may not even worry about who's, you don't necessarily need to crown an archery champion. You need for people to have fun. Uh, shooting and novelties is its own reward. Although, you know, uh, you can add prizes in, in an aspect of this. I can go over that a little bit more later, but I want to move on. Um, loader gear. Okay. Not everybody brings their archery stuff to events. If you're planning one of these and it's, it's a brand new thing, if, if, if you're planning a kingdom or principality event, the archery officer is responsible for bringing the loaner gear. If you're planning a local event, you need to contact somebody who's got a cache of, of loaner gear or several people who you know can bring loaner gear, which widens the, and we're talking loaner bows, loaner arrows, arm guards, finger tabs or gloves that can allow people who did not bring stuff to shoot. Uh, most advanced archers in the West Kingdom bring along a set or two or of loaner gear to the range on their own uh, and can be depended on to do this, although asking them is better. Uh, Principality of Sanagua has a set of, oh, it's 20 or 25 bows and a whole box load of arrows that can travel to events uh, when they're asked to. The uh, Minister of the Bow for Sanagua uh, is usually happy to, hey, you're adding an archery event. Yeah, I'll come up and I'll bring the party favors. Um, some baronies, some shires actually have their local sets of stuff. Start asking around, but arrange for this stuff ahead of time. You need the loaner gear if you're going to involve lots of people in the archery thing. Um, a word about this loaner gear, it is subject to inspection. It should be in good condition. Um, the West is a little bit lax on um, inspecting. We don't inspect everything that comes up to the range if it appears to be in good condition already. Uh, there are some times when you look at it and, oh boy, yeah. Uh, could I take a look at that bow and make sure I don't find any splinters coming up on it and stuff and cracks and, and things, but it's more of an on-demand on inspection. And this is one of the things that the art, target archery marshal is trained to do. And if the bow does not seem safe, it does not get shot that day. Okay, talked about loaner gear. Um, I kind of skipped ahead to that. Uh, the events and games that you're trying to add into these things can be a formal competition, uh, but just as much for people who want to come over and shoot a couple ends you know, of six arrows each. So they're shooting a dozen arrows, give them some sort of game to play. Uh, Tic-tac-toe is an archery game. It is competitive. It can be a simple one-on-one -on -one challenge. Hey, can I play a tic-tac-toe? Sure. And if they're not very good, find them somebody of similar um, skill set, skill level to play with. All right. Um, prizes. Everybody likes to get prizes. So if you're running an archery event, yeah, you can have a competition for score. It could be a, something as simple as shoot six arrows at this target and give me your score and whoever comes out on top at the end of the day gets a prize in court one moment i'm about to cough <coughs> so um anybody who wins a prize in the sca should receive the prize in court from the local royalty if you've got them um it's just the thing we do. I, I, there are some archery marshals that, hey, you won, here's your prize. No, no, no that wasn't right. <clears throat> the prize doesn't come from you, it comes from the royalty. 
you get called in the court, you get recognized. I have to tell the kids who win the Pop and Jay tournament that they can come by later and claim their prizes at court. If they're leaving site, you might make a, a an exception and okay, here's your prize. You'll be noted in court. <clears throat> but if at all possible, have the prizes presented in court. Oh, also, if you have local royalty or regional royalty, get them on board with your archery range program. If you've got an event going on, oh, to, um, before I get into that, if you're having an archery program, please, please, please do not forget to put it in the event copy. I can't tell you how many times I've had people come on, oh, you're having archery today. I didn't bring my bow. Make sure they know. Yeah, I'm seeing a lot of nods out there. Um, make sure they know. Make sure they bring their bow with them. Um, you can actually, in this way, encourage, hey, and if you've got a set of loaner gear to bring, bring that too, please. And by that, you may get more loaner gear. Um, get the Royals on board. Uh, in that, um, even to the point where you uh, ask them, hey, would you, just to show your support of all this new event we're doing or whatever, would you like to come over to the range and shoot a little bit? Um, this can go a long way because then their retinue has to come along with them and maybe you get them shooting too. Uh, the other thing that can be kind of fun when you get the royalty on board is um, see if their retinue or their guardsmen want to make a challenge with the neighboring royalty. And by this, you get more people onto the range. Um, frequently, the guardsmen are squires and heavy fighters. And if they shoot at all, they haven't in the last 10 years or so. I've actually trained a couple of them um, on site who, who had never shot before, but we're going to meet a challenge later in the day with the other guardsmen. Um, and successfully, I might add, he won his challenge uh, against another guy. Um, so if you can, the, the more people you get out to show that this is an event that's going on, that everybody is participating and everybody should participate in, the better off you're going to be. Um, that is pretty much it for my notes. Um, so we're going to open this up to questions and discussions. Very nice class. Thank you. Uh, a lot of great information. Um, some of our uh, things we like to do after we shut down the range, like up in, uh, here in Trimaris, specifically dark water after our events, is a lot of our marshals will have a quote-unquote marshal only shoot where we'll take like a small Easter egg and throw it out on the 40 yard mm. target and try to hit it. Um, that's a heck of a lot of fun. Or uh, little balloons. And the person that pops it gets to pick the next balloon and blow it up to whatever size they want. <laughs> okay, you know, yeah. Yeah. Normally when we have big events like Australia War, we just primarily set aside an afternoon after the range is all set up and all the marshals just get out there and shoot. Otherwise, because normally we're so busy during the, during the uh, uh, war, it's, it's hard for us to shoot. Yep. Good point. Okay. So I do double duty as both throwing weapons and archery. Ooh, bless you. Like, what half of me goes <laughs> here and what half of me goes there? Yep. I, I will say um, the, the marshal has to be there to make the event happen, but there's no reason that they can't find somebody who understands how to call a line mm -hmm. who is not a certified marshal, take it over to them for, from them temporarily, somewhat under su supervision, so that they can go shoot also if they're just not going to see that. If they're the lone marshal, it's not really fun having to shoot at the end of the day. Um, people who understand how to call a military rifle range can very easily adapt to calling a an archery line. Um, I, I, I left my range in the charge of a couple of um, military uh, men uh, one day for about an hour so I could go get lunch. I felt that they were con they were confident they knew how to run a line. I came back and saw them uh, and, and I don't think this is a bad idea. Some, one of the uh, children had made a minor infraction and was doing push-ups to atone for it before he was allowed to shoot again. 
Um, under the circumstances and because I wasn't there, yeah, okay, this is all right in this instance. It's not something I would do myself, but um, the kid was taking it in stride, so it was working out. I saw some nods. Did you have an objection to that, Roberto? Well, I find it kind of humorous. The fact is, I can't, as an ex, you know, platoon daddy, I can't yell at these, I can't yell at people on the archery line like I could at people on the uh, firing line at a rifle range. Yeah. <laughs> I, Grant, you're making the point by having the kid do push ups. I just think that it might be a little bit excessive. Sometimes a nice little talking to works wonders. Yeah, mostly I get I, I have a talk with them and make sure they understand it. And okay, are we going to keep going here? Uh, the second time I may ask them, you know, come back in an hour. Um, and then they they you know after the, the first talk they understand that may be a a, a thing. Um, because of the people I left the range in, in in charge of, I didn't get all up and you know, it's not something I do to make people do push ups because I can barely do them myself. Um, <laughs> And I hated doing them as a kid. So, but uh, it, it worked out and the range was safe during that time that I left it. I knew it was going to be safe because they understand what a range is and how to call a range. Right. Um, other comments, other novelties to share? Uh, with that, since we're at 4.07, I'm going to stop the recording. Oh. I've got another room to get to. All right.